Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with, if I could choose only one work by Composer X, it would have to be work F. Well, Composer X is Respighi, Ottorino Respighi. And I know, I know some of you want, you know, one of the Roman tone poems, or maybe all three of them in a clump. That I could certainly do, because I could do an album. We can call it the Roman Trilogy and consider it one big work. That would work very well. That's not my pick. My pick may surprise some of you. Um, I haven't heard it mentioned, but then again, I haven't heard Respighi mentioned very much either. So there you go. Uh, Respighi is a much better composer than people give him credit for being, I think. I really do. And my choice, not just because his orchestration is fabulous, I mean, it really was, but also because of of, of what he did with musical tradition and how he you know, presented it in neoclassical garb in some ways before Stravinsky did. I mean, he was, he was sort of at the forefront of that kind of stuff because he was very, very interested in early Italian music, um, as were all of the people in his, in his crew, Casella and Malpiero. I mean, they were editing all of these Italian composers, Vivaldi and Scarlatti and all that stuff, you know. So they, they, they were, were very, very intrigued by Italian Renaissance and early Baroque music, and their own production shows that very, very clearly. No, my choice for Respighi is the Three Botticelli Pictures, a work for chamber orchestra, which I think is one of the most luminous, beautiful, glittering, sensual, amazing little pieces of music that anybody ever wrote. And because it's not grandiose, I mean, that doesn't count against it, does it? I mean, I hope not. The three Botticelli pictures in question are La Primavera, that is spring, which sounds an awful, awful lot like Vivaldi. I mean, if you know spring from the four seasons, um, this has some of that quality to it. I mean, the tunes are completely different and the orchestration is completely different. I mean, it's got, you know, winds and percussion and all kinds of other stuff, but it has that character, that, that Italian Baroque spring character. It is the most beautiful realization of Botticelli's pictures. I mean, when you listen to the three Botticelli pictures, look at the Botticelli pictures because the musical representation of them is extraordinary. Really, really amazing. And after that, there's the Adoration of the Magi, which is just beautiful. And at the same time, you know, it, because it's the Magi, it's sort of exotic. It's Eastern. It reminds us that although we tend to put the story of Jesus in a manger in some place in Pennsylvania, um, it actually happened in the Middle East. And, and the Magi were from all over the place. And it was not... They were not from Pennsylvania. They were not Amish, you know, they weren't. But, but, you know, I mean, I understand that there's a universality to the story. So, you know, they could have been Amish, but, but the historical facts lend themselves to a little bit of sinuous Eastern sexy stuff. But the main tune is the, the song, the chant, Veni Emmanuel, which is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, when I was in, in high school, we sang Zoltan Kodai's arrangement for three-part choir, which is beautiful. Oh my God, you know, Veni, Veni, Emmanuel, Captivum Solve Israel, Qui Venit in Exilio, Privatus Dei Filio, Gaude, Gaude, Emmanuel, Captivum Solve Israel. You never forget it once you do it. It's one of the most beautiful tunes in Western history. And, and Respighi uses it very sensitively, mixed with this sort of Eastern processional thing that goes with it. And, oh, it's just marvelous. Oh. And then the finale. The finale is Venus on a Half Shell, the famous birth of Venus, where she's, you know, rising out of the waves on her clam or scallop or whatever it is. It's something like that, you know, with hair tastefully covering her her bustier there, you know, her her bosom, and looking really, really like Venus. It's just such a iconic picture. And the way Respighi does it, I mean, you see, you know, that the waves are in the painting, and you hear the waves in the music, and it's it, it just builds up to this enormous crescendo. Uh, it's, it's all it does. It's very simple. It's exactly the same kind of piece, actually. It's very interesting, from a slightly 
well, contemporaneous, actually, a very contemporaneous piece, maybe a little earlier, but the Charles Ives Housatonic at Stockbridge, which does the same thing. You have this sort of background of, of wavy motion. Of course, in the Ives, it's atonal, but, you know, that's okay. And then you have this, this hymn-like theme in front, um, which which just becomes bigger and bigger and louder and bigger and huge to a huge climax, and then it just ebbs away into nothingness. And it's just poetry in motion. And one of the most brilliant realizations of portraiture and music that you'll ever hear. And that is why I chose the three Botticelli pictures, because Respighi was a colorist, um, a colorist above all else practically, but his range of reference was quite wide. And I, my feeling was that if the god Cancrazans is, you know, poo-pooing the fact that everybody likes the Pines of Rome, which we should because it's fabulous and I never had more fun in my life than I had playing the Pines of Rome. That was the performance where the organ got stuck at the end and I had to unplug it and all that, meow, it was marvelous. But um, seriously, uh, I, I think that to show his mastery I mean, such mastery. There's no way that Cancrozans can eliminate everything else by a guy who could write that way for very small forces, but with such, such brilliance and amplitude and variety and constantly shifting colors. Oh, it's just unbelievably gorgeous. Absolutely amazing. And we should have the right to hear everything else that the man wrote. Absolutely. At least in my book. And I will Go to the death, defending our right to hear more of Respighi. So keep on listening, friends. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care.